Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So today I want to flesh out the Learn to Earn series a little bit more. Uh, today I want to show some basic uh, retirement uh, portfolio outlines by uh, age group. So I know that um, for some folks, uh, 2022 wasn't like a good year. And then for some people, uh, they may have stumbled also in 2023. Uh, but I, I think um, we need to start looking ahead. Uh, like how would we build like a, um, uh, like a basic diversified retirement portfolio with all the new um, high yield ETFs that are available. Um, and then this, and of course, this is just my opinion. Uh, if I had to start all over again, this is how I would approach it. And I know that some folks are, you know, still having uh, like a rough time of it, uh, but never give up. Uh, I'm just going to link like a video that um, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes uh, had in like a you know, way back when. Um, I know that like, you know, the cost of like food, housing, utilities, and then of course, like, just like student loans and like credit card, then all this other kind of stuff. Um, it, it's, you know, it's not easy. Um, but we also we'll always have to keep in mind that hard times don't always last forever, uh, especially for like those that are um, on the younger side. Uh, I think it just takes, it's a matter of like mental perseverance and just like time, uh, things will get better. Uh, so just to give you some background, I found like an interesting um, uh, nerd wallet uh, article. Uh, this this shows like the Vanguard four hundred one k balances by age. Uh, they show both like the average, so over here by kind of like the age age buckets, um, and then also the median. Um, one thing you'll notice that the median is uh, unfortunately quite a bit lower than the average. Uh, so I think like the median. It, it might be like a better representation of like kind of like the middle uh, of like people's uh, retirement accounts. Um, because like, you know, there, there's obviously some people that are very well off um, and it kind of skews like the kind of like the, the average a little bit more up. Um, so, so it's good to, that they showed like both, uh, both the median and the average just to give people like a perspective of what uh, people have. Uh, so I always, when I'm, when I'm trying to build out like these, uh, financial models, I like to try to be conservative because you need to give yourself like a little bit of wiggle room because like in life, uh, you know, poop happens, uh, sometimes there's accidents, you know, illnesses, uh, you know, unemployment, etc. Uh, and then I also want to, um, sandbag like the returns from defiance, pro shares, yield max, and, you know. Uh, future would be uh, high yield ETFs, uh, just to be just to play it safe. Because if you if you overestimate, um, and that's that's really bad. Because like you get your hopes up, um, and then you know when the returns don't quite like line up to like how you want. I mean, it's you know it's, it's very mentally defeating. Um, so I kind of like started dropping like the return assumptions down to like the twenty to thirty percent, um, and don't feel bad because. You know, twenty and thirty percent like per year is already pretty good. Like a lot of hedge funds will like, kill for like these type of returns. Um, and just to give you some further perspective, uh, when Warren Buffett was like a young investor, like he started off at like around like fifty percent. Um, but then like over time, uh, you know, like an old Warren Warren Buffett, um, his returns have kind of like dropped down to like kind of like the the low twenties. Um, the last time I looked. Um, and then even like guys like Stanley Druckenmiller, like his returns, um, uh, the last time I looked were like, you know, roughly like 30%. So, you know, you, you guys got to be more realistic about your uh, return assumptions. Um, so this way you don't, you know, set yourself up for uh, failure and don't get discouraged because like 20 to 30% is still a pretty good, um, you know, more realistic number that is still achievable. Uh, so again, um, for younger investors, uh, I know like the balances are kind of rough, they're kind of on the low side, but don't forget, like you have a lot of stuff that you have to kind of worry about. Like you, you're still paying off most likely like your, your student loans. Right. Um, and then you'll probably, uh, you know, you might be having a rough time getting like a, uh, finding like reasonable, like housing. And then of course, like you, you know, some of you are also, uh, trying to start families. So don't feel bad if you're um you know overall balances are on the lower side uh you know it, it takes time um and then you need like uh you know some help from 
from like some of these high yield ETFs to kind of like bring you back to where uh, I would say like where you were supposed to be. Um, I always felt bad that um, you know I was under underperforming like my parents and like my grandparents like generation in terms of like wealth accumulation. Um, and it you know every year is gonna it seems like it's getting uh, worse. Uh, but now that we have like new tools to use, um, I think you know. You know, there's there's some there's definitely like more hope. Uh, so, again, these are just like basic outlines. Uh, I don't know what you personally have like right now, um, but like if I had to kind of like start all over again, like I would use like IWMY as kind of like my core, um, and then I I kind of flush it out over time uh, with either stuff like like Kony or Tesla, uh, really like volatile but like you know uh, high risk uh, high return uh stocks and then also like maybe uh just to diversify a little bit uh maybe some, something like clip or like the new um or i guess like whenever like uh yield max return uh creates like their own uh version of clip clip uh, called kwby uh so that's still pending uh, sec approval but that's how i like i would start doing it because then um you know just like using like a mix of these i would like to you know I think I should be able to get like a portfolio return of 30% plus. Um, and plus like, you know, when I was young, like it, you know, I can take more uh, financial pain in the beginning. Uh, and then just to show you kind of like what the, also like the median and average returns are, you know, I just multiplied uh, whatever was in the tables before by 30%. Um, just to show you like what you can get like per year. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, for like those that are in like the 20s and 30s bucket, uh, you know, this per year doesn't sound like really exciting. I mean, this may might cover like you know, utilities, um, and maybe some um, uh, you know, essential bills. Uh, but again, don't give up because things get better um, over time. Uh, so now I'm in this like you know this 40 to 50s bucket. Um, so currently right now, I actually do have like as my core, like the triple QY, uh, it's less, slightly less risk than IWMY. So I have to mentally prepare myself for like slightly, uh, lower returns. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for like the new yield max, uh, inverse ETFs, because I also want to see how they perform as hedges. Um, and then I'm also looking at, uh, iSpy, uh, that recently came out from ProShares to kind of. Um, help uh, balance off the uh, the higher risk, higher return of of triple QY, um, and of course there, there's other stuff that um, over time, uh, you know, for the outline, I expect like when the um, like was when some of the newer uh, ETFs are approved, like I'm gonna start incorporating those as well uh, into these these outlines. So of course, like you know, this is just a work in progress, but this it's just to show you guys like what what could be a um, possible. So in my 40s and 50s, uh, like I, I'm going to assume like a slightly lower return, uh, just because I'm taking on like slightly less risk of 25%. Um, and this, this is like the time when you st uh, start, like you still need to um, think about like hedges. Uh, this could be either in the form of uh, more cash or just like the inverse ETFs. Um, and then when they finally come out, like I'll, I'll do like another video on that. So this is a little bit better uh, when you assume, um, again, based on the tables, I multiplied the median and um, averages uh, by 25%. Again, um, it's not great um, depending on like your account balance, but you know, if you look if you're cl uh, closer to like the average, you know, 19,000 percent, you know, a year isn't exactly um, life changing, but it is like, you know, it, it's almost like a part-time income. So I wouldn't like discount that uh, quite yet because you're still like, you know, you need to let like your portfolio um, compound over time. And then this is what like, kind of like my, my potential future could look like. Uh, so for those of you in like your 60s and 70s and above, um, that's when I'll, I'll probably start making like Jeppy as my core. Uh, again, um, depending on what what's available at the time, um, I'll probably have like uh, inverse ETFs as well. Um, and again, um, I'll probably have like a higher uh, cash balance um, and and or treasuries uh, just to see, um, 
because I don't know what the the future uh, uh, holds for us. So I don't know if like it depends on like how much like the, like treasuries are paying at the time. If it's like zero, then you know most likely I'm not even gonna like bother holding this. I'll probably have to find like something else, uh, maybe like a uh, like some boring like uh, dividend paying stocks. Um, and then like, you know, I guess like when I'm closer to like actual retirement age or, or traditional retirement age, um, I'm going to assume like a portfolio, uh, return of only like 20%. Um, now for, for myself, I don't know if social security will be uh, available. I'm just going to, um, I'm not even counting on it. Uh, but I guess like for those of you that are already at retirement age, um, maybe you you are getting some social security payments, so that'll definitely help. Um, and again, um, just multiplying by like the previous table, uh, just like some simple um, uh, some math, uh, multiplying everything by twenty five percent. Unfortunately, if you're in the median, uh, that's you know again this is part, probably more like you know part time income. But for those that are closer to like the average. Uh, this is when, well, hopefully by like I guess like when we're in the sixties and seventies, uh, you know, I I don't know how much like forty forty one thousand dollars will will get us, but hopefully by then, uh, you've already like paid off your mortgage, like your kids, are you know like are more capable adults and capable of fending for themselves, um, and I'm so, you know, and you know, and forty one thousand is not bad. Uh, hopefully you you might have like some other like forms of um, savings like. You know, just like a regular brokerage, and that might also like help as well. And then you know, uh, you know, for for those of us that are living in the U.S., I I don't know what the cost of living will be um, by the time we're like uh, we're in our retirement age. Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of folks that are also considering moving to like uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, I've seen like videos of people that are you know living at like. Um, you know, a fraction of what like the U.S. would cost. Uh, so that's also like another possibility. So again, uh, guys, don't give up hope uh, because like, you know, I think the first thing people need to consider is just like having a goal first. Uh, maybe like, uh, for example, like the passive income uh, investing uh, channel, uh, his type of goals, it, he seems like um, he's more, um, like he's already achieved it, it looks like. Uh, but it might be riskier because he has a lot of funds. Uh, but it is interesting to kind of like look through. Um, or do you want to be more like the Gen X uh, dividend investor? Uh, like he's also seems to be retired, but I think he's also working. Um, it's more of like a slower but steadier approach. Or or do you maybe want to be like a scumbag, uh, skirt chasing speculator like myself, um, where I have like volatile returns, but I'm also moving towards like middle of the road. Uh, so, you know, there's different types of people that are out there that you can kind of um, model yourself after. It depends on, like, what your, um, what, like, how much risk that you can take. Um, and then if in doubt, always zoom out. Like, sometimes things, like, seem bleak, but when we look at, like, the overall returns of even just, like, the SPX over time, I remember when, like, you know, like, the dot-com uh, crash happened, and, like, I thought, oh, man, I'm going to have a tough time getting a job. Uh, Etc. Um, but you know, I, I did get a job. Um, and I was able to kind of save save up. Um, again, uh, when like the two thousand eight two thousand nine financial crisis happened, I thought, oh my god, uh, how am I ever gonna like reach my retirement goals? Um, but you know, don't forget like when um, stock prices are, are lower, th this gives you chances to like you know accumulate more, and then like when the good times come up come back again i mean look at this nice long stretch of like almost like just like steady smooth uh like upside potential um and that that really like helped me out and then what i thought like you know 2020 when the uh well i'm not even going to mention that again but you know like like we had like such a ridiculous like drop i thought oh my god like i'm never going to reach my retirement goals again and then guess what happened like things started to get better again. Uh, so, you know, it's always helpful to kind of like just take a step back um, when you think like you, you can't um, uh, retire or whatever, or like, you know, you gotta like take a step back um, and like stop making excuses and just like start um, uh, saving as much as you can. Um, so again, I think like in general, everybody needs some cash just to 
uh, just for both um, emergency purchases, uh, purchases, and then also for like potentially when there's like you know when the stock market goes on sale. Uh, this way, you can kind of uh, redeploy. And some people like I've noticed like they they don't hold it in just dollars. They they have like some gold coins or like you know maybe some crypto uh, stashed away somewhere for for like emergency purposes. So you know th there's like more options now. Uh, so again, like you know, when the t bad times come back again, you can re redeploy it into like index like your core positions, and or like you know if you also decide to concentrate into like individual stocks, you can do that too. Um, and of course, like again, this is not like financial advice or anything. This is just like like really broad outlines. Uh, you also have to keep in mind like your own personality, um, and then your own personal goals. Uh, but I think like the the fact that we have um, like things like Chepi and soon to be um, like in, uh, new and improved like inverse ETFs. Um, I think those will like really help. Um, so again, uh, you know, I, I want to keep um, people like in mind that, you know, my subscribers, I actually think you can actually outperform uh, just like the averages, like don't feel like discouraged or limited. Uh, I would say like just like start as early as possible because I really expect like every subscriber to out easily outperform. Um, I mean, I've and I've seen like other YouTube channels where you know people are like kind of like on the younger side, like those like maybe in like the thirties or forties. They're probably like really close to like early retirement too, so it's not impossible. Um, and you know, always keep in mind like the you know there's more like high yield choices coming. Uh, of course, like these are like pending uh, SEC review, uh, review and approval, but like for example, like Defiance has like zero DT spreads. So if you want something a little bit like uh, less risky, that's going to be coming, uh, hopefully soon. Um, also, like if you want to diversify a little bit more besides like just like Clip, there's like things like EEMY uh, that are you know uh, pending approval and like. Uh, as far as like Umax is concerned, uh, I'm really excited for MSTY. Uh, I think GDXY could be another like thing that you can diversify into. Uh, also, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how like the inverse ETFs like work out. Uh, and then this is, and this is just like defines in Um Who knows like if Neil's uh, Pro Shares and Simplify could they could surprise us with like uh, you know something that we've never seen before too. Um, and then, like you know, the the good old days of like dividend yields of like three percent plus, uh, they really seem quite um, quaint um, at this point. Um, I think just in general, uh, for the for the for those of us that are um, really really risk averse or want to like tactically trade, I think it's fantastic that we have like so many like choices now. Um, but again, like think of this as just like generic guidelines. Uh, you know, feel free to to to, to round out your por uh, personal portfolio with treasuries, or maybe you want uh, dividend aristocrats to kind of like you know uh, you know fill up your portfolio, and then also just like part time jobs and side hustles, etc. Uh, you know, things aren't as bad as you um, think. Um, of course, like you know, this is just like just my general opinion of like how I would approach things uh, because like dopey fat pandas are not qualified financial advisors um, at the end of the day it's your money so like you know feel free to do whatever you feel is best for yourself uh, of course um, if you like this type of content please consider giving this a like um, I really appreciate all my uh, subscribers uh, as you can know I I would like as much support uh, to grow this channel uh, because as you know uh, bamboo inflation is out of control. So any uh, uh, support is greatly appreciated. Uh, hope you guys make some good money out there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.